Have you walked up and down upon the earth lately? I have. And I've examined man's wonderful inventions. And I tell you that in the arts of life, man invents nothing. But in the arts of death, he outdoes nature herself and produces by chemistry and machinery all the slaughter of plague, pestilence and famine. The peasant today eats and drinks what was eaten and drunk by the peasants of 10,000 years ago. And the house he lives in has altered not so much in a thousand centuries as the fashion of a lady's bonnet in a score of weeks. But when he goes out to slay, he carries a marvel of mechanism that lets loose at the touch of his finger all the hidden molecular energies and leaves the javelin, the arrow, and the blowpipe of his fathers far behind. In the arts of peace, man is a bungler. His heart is in his weapons. There is nothing in man's industrial machinery but his greed and his sloth. This marvelous force of life of which you boast is a force of death. Man measures his strength by his destructiveness. What is his religion? An excuse for hating me. What is his law? An excuse for hanging you. What is his art? An excuse for gloating over pictures of slaughter. I bought a sixpenny family magazine and found it full of pictures of young men shooting and stabbing one another. Their imagination glows. Their energies rise up at the idea of death, these people. They love it. And the more horrible it is, the more they enjoy it. I could give you a thousand instances, but they all come down to the same thing. The power that governs the earth is not the power of life, but the power of death. And the inner need that has served life to the effort of organizing itself into the human being is not the need for a higher life but for a more efficient engine of destruction.